Hey everyone, Andrew here. It's uh, the second night of filming for me. It's just past 12. I usually wait until nighttime to film because it's less distracting, there's less going on, and I can really just focus on what's in front of me. So today's been a good day. You know, I've been working on a little video project that I want to take a stab at, so I've spent most of the day doing some recordings and stuff like that uh, off my computer. Um, but the subject that's been sort of plaguing my mind today is imposter syndrome, which I've definitely been dealing with these last few years, and I think all of us deal with at some point or another. So if you aren't familiar with imposter syndrome, it's basically this voice in the back of your head or this underlying thought that you don't deserve to be where you are right now. For example, say you just got a job or you just got hired at a new company or got promoted to a new role at work or took on a new portfolio, whatever the scenario is. You have this underlying belief that you don't actually deserve it, that you got lucky, that someone else can do a better job than you, that you aren't going to do a good job at it. So you have this narrative going on in your head that you aren't supposed to be doing what you're doing. And it comes in different forms and happens to different people in different ways, but I think it happens to all of us, whether it's in small ways, sometimes a little bits of doubt, or in large ways, so these long periods of despair where you're thinking to yourself, I don't deserve to be here, I don't deserve to have what I have. Um, I've definitely been dealing with it myself in the last few years, you know, starting to blog, starting this channel, applying to new jobs, putting myself out there in any capacity. I've always had this voice in the back of my head that says, you don't deserve to do this. There are people better at you than this, and you should just give up now before you make a fool of yourself. It's hard, right? It's difficult to have that voice in the back of your head especially when you don't realize that it's a voice in the back of your head. You think to yourself that it's you telling yourself that, that you're just trying to be reasonable or rational. But in reality, it's this negative voice separate from who you are trying to convince you to stop. It has a lot of reasons for doing so. Oftentimes it has to do with safety. Uh, the voice is just trying to make sure that you maintain status quo because status quo is safe right now. And if you venture into new territory, something bad could happen. Um, sometimes I like to think it's just looking out for me, and I respect and appreciate the voice in my head looking out for me. However, in order to grow, in order to accomplish big things, in order to make a difference in, in your own life and the lives of others, you have to put yourself out there and you have to take that risk. So you can thank the voice in the back of your head trying to make sure you're safe and say, I appreciate it, but I'm going to go for it anyways. Thank you for putting this on my radar. Thank you for reminding me to be safe. And you can approach things cautiously. So you can almost use that, that voice in the back of your head to your advantage. Now, really overcoming imposter syndrome is your own personal journey. <clears throat> your own personal journey. Everybody approaches it in different ways. Everybody overcomes it in different ways. What helps me manage my imposter syndrome is shifting what the focus is. What happens with imposter syndrome a lot is that we focus too much on ourselves. The voice says to us, you don't deserve to do this. Do you really think you're knowledgeable enough for this? Do you really think you can do this? And if you're always focusing on the self, you will inevitably look for reasons to convince yourself that you shouldn't be doing it. I'm not sure if that makes a lot of sense. Basically, if the focus is completely on you, you will look for reasons to convince you that you don't deserve to be there. But what helps me overcome imposter syndrome is putting the subject or the purpose at the center of it all. So rather than thinking, oh, do I deserve to be doing this? I ask myself, does this need to be said? Does somebody need to hear this? Will this benefit someone in some capacity? And when you ask yourself questions like that, the answers start becoming more positive. Well, yes, there's bound to be somebody out there who needs to hear this. There is bound to be some type of person who will benefit from what I want to put out there, whether it's entertaining content that makes people laugh, whether it's educational content that teaches them a skill, or whether it's simple videos to make them think about life a little bit differently, whatever it is. Asking yourself who will benefit from this is a great way to overcome imposter syndrome because it shifts the focus from you to other people. And when you're doing things for other people, 
you commit a lot more to overcome your anxieties and insecurities and really put yourself out there to not just make yourself better, but also to make other people better. Yeah, that's basically my little practice and little thought process behind imposter syndrome by shifting the focus away from me and more towards the people that I could impact and the people that could benefit from what I'm putting out there. I'm able to push myself that extra little bit and really convince myself to do what I want to do or what I'm thinking about doing. Like I said, I've done that for the jobs I've applied to, I've done that for making new friends, and I do that for this, or actually, I've started doing that for this. So it's going to be a slow journey, it's going to be a painful one, and I definitely will second guess myself down the road. But by reminding myself that I'm doing this for other people to hopefully make their lives a bit better, I know that I'll be able to push myself a little bit more. So that's it for me. This video is going to take a lot of editing because it's seven minutes long and I have been screwing up the whole time. I'm rusty on talking to the camera. It's been over a year since I've had to do that. So anyways, that's it. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's any areas that you think I can improve on and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.